The anthem is not a toy or a tool. It does not serve to help anyone but itself. The anthem will always be a noble, ever-changing tune. It has a will. It must create for its creation. In that way, it must also destroy for creation and destruction on merely two edges of the same sword. It cannot be tamed, and for it to be controlled would be unimaginable. Hello everyone, my name is 3 Hero, and welcome to today's lore series for Anthem. Today, we will focus our attention to the very thing that has brought us all together, the very thing that can't be controlled no matter what forces are at hand, and the very thing that has so much mystery behind it, that no one knows what its true purpose is, and is too dangerous if left alone. The Anthem is a force of pure creation that can mould, create and change, and destroy anything and anyone. It's said that it's been here since the beginning of time, and has destroyed entire civilizations on a whim with theory it being the creator of the world as we know it. However, not much information is known on whether this force has been here since time itself, or has something much larger and powerful created it and left it to his own bidding. Now it sounds very similar to our real world examples of the Big Bang or religious icons such as God, that talk about how the universe came to existence from an unknown force, or a force at hand. But neither parties know which evidence is true, as it's very hard to look at something as mischievous as this, and neither of these two parties have led to a dangerous threat to our coexistence like the Anthem of Creation, which, if it was real, would be... well, I'd be very surprised if humanity even survives this long. Now this force can't be fully controlled by us, or generally anything from what we know. It's way out of the comprehensive hands of humanity, or anyone, to handle such an unknown power, and yet this hasn't stopped many outside forces from trying to hold the power for their own desires. We've seen the Dominion forces, led by Dr. Harkin at one point, tried this with Freehold many years ago, and although they believed that using the Centipa, an ancient shape of relic designed for controlling the Anthem creation, would be easy and successful in their end, they ended up destroying Freehold, and causing a violent cataclysm that no one's ever seen before, one of the worst that's ever spawned, which also spawned a number of monstrosities such as the concurring Ash Titans, that to this very day causes problems for humans to deal with. Not long after this event, the Monitor, a special operative and survivor of Freehold's Cataclysm event, proceeds to carry on from what Dr. Harkin failed to achieve, and proceeds to gather the necessary part to try once again at controlling the Anthem via the Centipede, and also revisiting Freehold to do this. Now from my understanding, the Monitor manages to achieve this goal, thanks to the current knowledge that Dominion holds from, from the Heart of Rage cutscene, to where we finally confront him, to where he manages to ascend his current form, somehow, and becomes a sort of, I would say, kind of a god, maybe demigod, that can commune and use the anthem to his own bidding. While oppressive and destructive at the same time, he's not fully in control of the anthem as he may think he is. And like they mentioned, he's slowly losing control of himself with the anthem, which is a telltale sign of how small and unknown the monitor is in terms of understanding the anthem as a whole. You can't control something so big and powerful like this without knowing the consequences. Now another example of a race from a very long time ago that tried this are called the Shapers, who were once considered gods in the time and used tools called the Relic to channel parts of the Anthem to create and craft the world how they pleased. They gave themselves 9 days to create the ideal world, the perfect world in their eyes. But after the third day, they vanished, leaving behind all of their unfinished works and relics that to this very day tap into the echoes of the Anthem and change the landscape and species into something not worldly and when left unchecked for too long, they can overflow from the power of the Anthem and lead to events like the Cataclysm, which are great a end of the war material. For something so powerful that's beyond the comprehensive hands of the many, the Dominion, for example, have managed to harness bits of the Anthem successfully, in the form of the Storm Javelin, while also using it to enhance their fighters, or in a very dark and twisted way, mutate prisoners into Furies, which you may have encountered in some stories and missions through a number of experiments, and through the use of Shaper tools, and the Anthem of Creation raw exposure, which is known to have some negative side effects on those affected by it. Now, whether this last part here is true or not is left a bit in the air, as it simply whispers passed down to others, but if this is something coming from the Dominion, it wouldn't be that surprising when you think about it. At the same time, we also do have the relics of the past from the supposed past gods that still activate and use over time with or without our help. As well as the Shapers and Dominion forces, it has also been noted that the Scars have used the Anthem creation through the Shapers relics to empower themselves in one scenario with a Scar Luminary. Now one thing I find quite funny is that Scars, compared to everyone else, don't get 
I would say, psychologically affected by the anthem like many other people do. Like the Cyphers, if they hear the anthem, they get kind of intoxicated to it. They get confused, blinded, they want more of it, which can lead to a very destructive path, aka the Heart to Rage scenario. While the Scars, on the other hand, they don't get affected by this, which gives me a prompt that maybe the Scars have more of a deeper connection to the Shaper Relics or the Anthem as a whole, and whether there's a missing connection that we just don't know about just of yet. But this is more of me reading over bits of the lore from people's past experience, from evidence of the Scars and how they interact with some of the Relics and the Anthem, and some of the, I'll say theories I've seen from other people where they try to make some connections between the two. But to be, to, to be honest, this is all just my own kind of base, based off theories that I think maybe it has a bit of substance to it. It might not. But we are just going to have to wait and see. But anyways, now we can safely say it's possible to close the Anthem creation in small portions. But anything beyond that, and that's where things get hairy. Now, I believe the main issue the Dominion and many other forces have in terms of controlling the Anthem is that although they believe they know everything they need to know about the Anthem and how to control it, they in fact don't. The Dominion relied too heavily on old relics of the past and some persuaded technology on their end to make things work in their own way. They tampered and used part of the Anthem for their own goals and believe that just achieving this is enough for them to be worthy of holding the Anthem. But what I see them trying to do is make a giant leap over a very wide canyon to reach the very end, as if they're in a race against other forces. But what they don't understand is that they have to build up their knowledge bit by bit until they create a strong enough bridge across that very canyon they try to jump over. Similar to the Shapers, who I say are probably the closest in terms of being able to control the Anthem through their tools, but both parties have failed in terms of truly understanding something so big and powerful that they simply can't get their heads around. It's not something as simple as a old relic from the past that they could just pick up and have unlimited power there and then, it's something much more bigger, it's something that controls everything, something that can affect everyone, something that can just make your existence non-existence. I think that's what the problem is, people don't seem to know how dangerous the Anthem truly is, you can't control something so powerful and large and unknown without understanding the main consequences behind it. And if we'll ever find out the main reason behind the Anthem, God knows when, but I'm hoping that eventually down the line the devs will expand a bit more and actually tell us what the main purpose of the Anthem is, not the reason why it was created, just the purpose. Does it have some bigger meaning to it, or is it just some kind of messed up game of chess? Now while I do believe we are slowly understanding the effects on roles of the Anthem creation, and on the world it has, thanks to the Arcanist, it seems like many of the theories and ideas behind the Anthem is left alone, as it's too volatile to experiment with and hold more risk than success. Like I said, something so big and unknown is way too risky to go ahead and mess around with. Like I said, and the Heart of Rage for example, is another prime example of us going ahead tampering with a ancient relic, seeing if we can try to go ahead and control it, and then seeing it backfire onto us, with horrible results. But one thing I found quite strange by the Anthem creation is that it has shown to have a mental effect on ciphers. You are known to tap into or make contact with it. Although normal for ciphers to connect with it, there have been some cases where ciphers who ventured too far become ensnared to the music of the anthem, which is going to be something quite common you can see a lot about hearing sounds and music and how it sounds like instruments being played when connected to the anthem. But except from that, the one negative side to them hearing the anthem is that they either lose consciousness for too long or they die in the process. For this, we only need to look at the events of the Heart of Ray to see the effects it had on the mission, and how the very ciphers who were meant to aid the freelancers went downhill once they heard the anthem call to them. There's also a very old tale from the Codex entry called the First Cipher, about a young cipher who bended too far into the deep corner of the anthem by accident, and never came back. But apparently some ciphers swear that she still lingers around the guide ciphers in an amplifier, but this could merely be a folktale passed on from future generations. Or this could actually be true, but it's only on rare occasions that she shows herself. And yet, for such an unknown force that places inhabitants at the world zone, can change life in a single second, and also has the power to wipe life out completely, and if you start again, at any moment, the Anthem creation is connected to everything and everyone. 
and I have a feeling that we'll see more of the Umbrella creation over time, with it breaking down its origins, and hopefully its real purpose. But for now, all we can do on our end is pray we don't fall victim to the Anthem, and carry on studying it until we get a bigger and better idea as to what its endgame goal might be. Now, before I go, there's one thing I want you guys to have a think about. I keep seeing small references from some of the codex about the Anthem singing to Cyphers once in contact with it. They describe it as peaceful and beautiful to hear the closer you get to it and how it will try to pull you in as if it's some kind of beautiful but deadly trap. Now, could there be some sort of connection with the Cyphers and the Anthem creation to where they could possibly communicate with the Anthem by listening to its songs? Because what we currently know is that for you to become a Cypher, you need to be exposed to raw Anthem and then over time, your abilities start to prop up and then you become a Cypher. But from what I can understand is that too much Anthem can lead to negative effects and many psychological effects. So in a way, could this be similar to a mental illness? And the songs they're hearing could be something that's being jumbled in the heads? But then when you think about it a bit more, if that's the case, all Cyphers might have a mental illness. But I don't really know, there could be a lot more to this. And then another thing you also have to think about is that the Shapers from years ago might have knew about this, they might have had some kind of connection with the Anthem, they might have heard the same songs that the people of today get kind of hear of. And for them, they decided to create these giant relics, giant and small relics, sorry, to utilise these various songs they hear to create and destroy things, a bit like Minecraft in a way. So maybe there is a deeper connection to where if the Anthem talks to you, maybe it's trying to say something to you. But it can't say something to you because it might be too powerful, so it tries to sing to you, which is a bit more peaceful. But the more you listen to it, the more destructive it becomes to you. I don't know. This this is more this is me like this is my general mindset on how the anthem might just be a bit more of a I say instrument that's out of tune. It sounds disgusting at first, but over time, the more you listen to it, the better it gets. But thank you everyone for stopping by to hear a bit about my Anthem lore and a bit of my ranting like normal and some of my general thoughts of the world as it continues to grow. I'll continue to upload these as the lore and community continues to grow and if there's always shown interest in it because the Anthem at the moment with all this lore and backstory to it is incredibly interesting and it's surprising that no one's really covering this. But like always, if you enjoy the content and like to see more like this then please leave a like, a comment and share for more and like always I hope to see you again quite soon.